Today, I want to share with you the number one question that every freight broker startup needs to answer. Now, when you think about that, there's probably a whole bunch of questions that go through your head. Most of them are probably not wrong. They're questions that you need to answer, but there's one that people rarely talk about. And that's the one that I want to talk about today. And the question is, what are you willing to sacrifice to be successful as a freight broker? Yes. Sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? All right. So I'm going to give you a list of, I don't know, five or six different things that I sacrificed and that I've seen other people sacrifice in order to build a successful freight brokerage or freight agency. Now, this really applies to almost all entrepreneurs, but I'm framing it in the realm of freight brokerage and freight agency because that's why you're here, right? So first, let's talk about number one, family time. The reality is when you become an entrepreneur, when you start your freight brokerage, your freight agency, you're going to have a lot of good things going on, but you are going to have to compromise some family time. I can tell you that I, when I first started my freight brokerage back in 2003, the first several years, I missed all kinds of family events. I missed weddings. I missed birthdays. I missed reunions, right? I missed just parties in general. I mean, I missed some of that family time the first few years, but I was willing to sacrifice that those first few years to have a much bigger payoff later, right? So yeah, family time is something that you may have to sacrifice. That's number one. Number two, sleep. Yep. Sleep is something that a lot of times entrepreneurs are forced to sacrifice. When I first started back in 03, I remember I would leave the house by 6 a.m. Most of the time, I did not get back until 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And that was five or six days a week. And when I wasn't in the office, I was thinking about business. I was thinking about the things that I needed to do, right? So even on weekends, I was consumed. So losing sleep, not being able to get, you know, eight or 10 or 12 hours of sleep, you know, being able to survive on four or five or six hours of sleep sometimes, that's just the reality, right? So you're going to lose some sleep. There's going to be some sleepless nights because of stress. There's going to be some sleepless nights because of worrying. That's just the nature of owning your own business, especially as a startup. Number three, a lavish lifestyle. Things that a lot of people have gotten really used to. You know, for example, having a new car versus a used car, okay? If you saw the hoopty that I was driving around in back in 2003, you'd laugh, okay? It's just the reality. But for me, I wanted to take all of that, all of those resources and invest them into my business. So I wasn't driving a brand new Mercedes or a brand new BMW, or a brand new F-150 truck. The fact is, I've owned all those since then. But when I first started, I had to sacrifice some of the lavish lifestyle. For some of you, it might mean the difference between renting a home versus buying a home. That's a reality. You may not be in a position to buy for a few years because you have to sacrifice now for the business. Jewelry, vacations. I did not go on vacations. Here, I'll tell you a funny story. Got married in September 27th of 2003. Started my business, incorporated my business on October 3rd, which was six days later, okay? Took a two or three day honeymoon and from that point did not go on vacation for, didn't, didn't even utter the words vacation for three or four years. And even then it was more of a weekend type vacation. And so we got to that five year mark of which things really kind of solidified and cash flowed and had done extremely well. And at that point I could afford to take a vacation. Okay. So now here's the reality. Let me clarify one thing. You, you probably won't have to sacrifice all of these things, but these are some of the things that a freight broker startup is going to have to consider sacrificing. Okay. All right. Number four, time with your friends. Just like time with your family is precious, but also difficult, time with your friends. You know, maybe you belong to a bowling league. Maybe you belong to a softball league. Maybe you belong to some sort of social clubs. A lot of times those things are going to go out the window. Those things are going to take a back seat. They're not going to be a priority in the early days of a freight broker startup. So those are things that you have to consider right? Those are things you have to think about coming in because here's the reality. And I'm going to, I have a few more. I want you to hang tight. I think I have four more, but I want you to understand something before you invest a lot of time, 
energy, resources, money into starting a business, whether that be a freight brokerage or a freight agency or a trucking company or a dispatch company, whatever you're deciding to do, before you do that, you have to do that mental exercise of what am I willing to sacrifice? Because the fact is every successful entrepreneur sacrifices something along the way, especially in startup days, okay? All right, so number five, hobbies. Listen, I remember my first three years of my business, 2004, five, and six. I don't think I, judo, hunting, and fishing are my three primary hobbies, all right? I've been a black belt in judo for many years. I'm a third degree black belt. I'm an instructor. I've been a competitor. I've hunted since I've been a teenager and see even, even before that bow and and gun, and also been fishing since I could walk. So those are lifelong hobbies for me. Those were not easy things to give up, but I didn't do any of those things for the first three years of my business. Yes, it was a choice. I was insanely driven. I was very focused and thus the trade-off made sense. So the reality is you may have to compromise and sacrifice some of your hobbies. Number seven, your health. Listen, I would suggest that you don't sacrifice your health, but a lot of times your health will suffer from being an entrepreneur. Late hours, not getting a lot of sleep, stress, not eating right, not working out. Those are all contributors to your health, negative and positive. And so the reality is a lot of times there is a little bit of a sacrifice there. Now, again, not all of these have to be sacrifices. If I were to tell you anyone that you definitely don't want to sacrifice, it's your health. But that would be completely up to you. But even myself, I remember the first few years I gained 20 pounds because I wasn't doing those hobbies. I wasn't working out. I wasn't eating. I had a lot of stress. But then I realized it and I course corrected and then finally got back into good health. But the reality is it was a compromise. It was a sacrifice that I was willing to make for those first few years. And then number eight, the security of a weekly paycheck, right? So most of you watching this are currently in or have had a J-O-B, right? And the nice thing about those jobs is that every week or every two weeks, automatically there's this deposit that shows up in my bank account and it's called a paycheck. So the reality is, is that when you have a W-2 job and you're working for somebody else, that paycheck is typically pretty consistent. 99 plus percent of the time, that check is gonna show up on time, it's gonna show up in your bank account, and you're gonna be able to spend that money. Now, the reality is, as an entrepreneur, unfortunately, you sometimes are the last person to get paid, right? The lights need to stay on, the phone bill needs to be paid, the load boards need to be paid, the carriers need to be paid. Everybody needs to be paid and then you get paid. Now, the great part is as a freight broker, you've got low startup costs, low overhead. And the reality is you shouldn't have a huge issue getting paid once you start getting established. But in those first three to six months, when you're just starting to get your your first customers, cash flow can be slow. And so the reality is that predictable paycheck is not going to be nearly as predictable as when working for yourself as it is when you're working for someone else. Okay. So those those are eight things that I want you to consider, but I want you to hang tight with me because I want to share something with you. Don't disappear on me. So I want you to think about that for a second. Consider that. Give it some serious thought because the real question now that you need to ask yourself is, is it worth it? Is the sacrifice worth it? Okay. Was the sacrifice worth it? And so I'm going to answer this on a personal level. I can't answer it for you. I'm going to answer it for me. And the answer is yes. All right. Owning my own business has allowed me to take control of my career, take control of my finances, earn way more than any job could ever pay, and gave me the ability to exit multiple businesses where I was able to sell those businesses and then move on to other businesses and other things that I was interested in. For example, my logistics company. I owned that for 13 years, started it with zero, grew it to $80 million a year, and then sold the business. Now I have my Freight Broker Bootcamp online training program that I love, I enjoy, I work on regularly. And so that has become my new focus. But the reality is I've been able to exit. In my career, the sacrifices have been worth it. When I was in the middle of it, hey, listen, like everybody else, there's always those questions in your mind. But the reality is as a successful entrepreneur, you're going to need to be ready to have sacrifices, okay? But here's the thing I want you to think about. Consider this and lean in really quick because this is going to probably hit close to home, okay? So lean in for a second and just hear me out. Today, there is no sunset cruise retirement story, okay? 
where you retire and you sail off into the sunset. It doesn't exist when it comes to a job, having a job and a W-2 job and working for someone else. That doesn't exist. The only way that that really exists is for you to own your own business. That's the reality. I mean, think about it. Pensions are pretty much a thing of the past. They're pretty much gone. There's really no tax, real tax advantage to a 401k. The reality is you're either going to pay the taxes now or you're going to pay the taxes later. Either way, there's no real advantage. Social Security is insolvent and will probably go away, unfortunately, in the next decade or sooner. And the fact is you can never exit for a big payday from a job. So the reality is owning your own business is the only true way to take control of your financial future and to truly retire and have that sunset retirement story, right? So while the sacrifices can be painful and they can be challenging for an early stage entrepreneur, freight broker, freight agent, I wouldn't trade my entrepreneurial journey for anything. The reality is everything has a compromise. It's that old adage, right? You can have everything. You just can't have it all today. And the fact is sacrifice is going to be a part of that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you are curious about becoming a freight broker, you want to learn the A to Z and you want to get under the hood and you really want some help, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Trained over 10,000 students, personally done over $200 million as a freight broker. And we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. So check that out at FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. If you guys enjoyed this, do me a huge favor. I don't run any paid ads. You know, everything here is done word of mouth. Do me a huge favor. Hit the like button no matter where you're at. Share the stream. Ask me a question in the comment when we get to the Q&A. Truly appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you next week on a new Freight Burger Bootcamp Live.